Hello and welcome to another video. So I did a video um, on sine x using the definition of a derivative to find the derivative of sine x. Now this is the turn of cosine x and the process is exactly the same. So I'm just gonna get down straight into it and we're gonna have fun. Let's do it. So the general definition of a derivative is that f prime of x is equal to um, the limit as a small change h approaches 0 of f of x plus that small change minus f of x over h. So we're going to now use the function which is cosine and that's going to be, it's going to be the limit as h goes to 0 of cosine x plus h minus f of x over h. Well, we know that when we have the sum of angles for cosine, if we have two angles added, we'll be doing, um, say we have cosine a plus b, we're going to be having cosine a cosine b minus sine a sine b, and that's what we're going to be doing here. So this means the limit as h goes to 0 of cosine x, cosine h. Well, this is not hyperbolic cosine. I'm just using h. Okay, so let's do that. Um, minus sine x, sine h, minus f of x, which is cosine x. Okay, and all of this will be divided by h. So what we could do is move cosines, the two terms that contain cosines together, and we're going to have this to be the limit as h goes to 0 of cosine x, cosine h minus cosine x, then minus sine x, sine h over h. So I'm going to factor this now, take out the cosine h. So this implies um, the limit. Hey, we got to keep writing the limit. Never forget to write the limit, otherwise what you're writing is a lie. You gotta stop lying. Okay, so this is gonna be the limit as h goes to zero of, so I'm factoring out cosine x and what's gonna be left will be cosine h minus one. So I have cosine h minus one. Um, then I have minus, minus sine x sine h. all over h. So what I'm going to do next is split this in a two, put h under this, put h under that, okay? And we're going to go to limit as h goes to zero of cosine x. Now when I split this, it's going to look like this. And I'm also going to separate this, so it's going to be cosine h minus one. I'll put the h just under this one, okay? Because I need this identity, okay? Um, minus, and this will be, uh, because I'm splitting it, I will take, uh, apply the limit to the other side too, okay? Limit of sine x multiplied by sine h over h. Now, something you wanna observe, which I also mentioned in the other video, is that the limit, you wanna call these um, you want to know them because there's some of them like that. You just have to know the definition of E, the limit of sine, sine H over H or sine X over X or sine K over K as um, in this case, as H goes to zero will always be one. The case here, cosine anything minus one divided by that number. Well, as, 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 as h approaches zero, that's what's important. It has to be small, and as it approaches zero, this expression will become zero. So what we have right here, I can apply the product rule, not product rule, the uh, product of a limit rule, okay? One of the laws which says that you can distribute the limit. So you have the limit as h goes to zero of cosine x multiplied by the limit as h goes to zero of 
cosine h minus 1 over h minus, you do the same thing here, the limit as h goes to 0 of sine x multiplied by the limit as h goes to 0 of sine h over h. So what you observe is that we've taken the limit of every single uh, part of this expression and what you have left is that if we go back to the beginning f prime of x will now be equal to the limit of this is just cosine x because as h is going to 0 it's not affecting cosine x because cosine x contains no h okay so that's going to be cosine x multiplied by well this is an identity limit that's what I call it you, once you see it you should recognize it as this is what's going to happen so it doesn't matter what this is they could use any letter x theta whatever if you have cosine theta minus 1 over theta as and you take the limit as theta or h or whatever you're using goes to 0 then your answer is going to be 0 you can try that on your calculator you see that you're tending towards 0 so this is going to be 0 minus in this case this sign remains the same because it contains no h and in this case the limit of this expression is 1 okay so that gives you 0 minus sine x which is negative sine x so f prime of x equals that so we can say generally d dx of cosine x is negative sine x I hope you learned something in this video if you did give it a thumbs up give it a share leave a nice comment in the comment section and never stop learning because those who stop learning have stopped living <laughs>